So what is that? What does that mean? How do you begin to um, translate human rights ideas, these big ideas that are supposed to reflect international global consensus on some level, but, but which many people feel have a Western bias, how do you translate them at the local level? Um, and how do you make them meaningful so that people want to and will um, apply them? At the same time, expecting human rights to change minds, hopefully, without it being purely a, a, a matter of, of cultural imposition. How do we, how do we get, get through all this? And, and, I, and I'll tell you, I don't have that all worked out. I don't know the answers to all this, but I want to um, see if I can use some of my own data from my research in Senegal to kind of point a little bit in the direction of where I see some of this, some, at least some potential for this vernacularization and this translation from the, from the global down to the local level. Um, my, my main research was in San Luis, Senegal, West Africa, and, and um, if San Luis looks a little bit like New Orleans, it's, it's because it, it, a common French colonial tradition, um, and this on, the, uh, on your right is the, um, is the courthouse where I did a, a lot of my research. Senegal is a predominantly Muslim country, and the system of family law is sort of a compromise between uh, Islamic law or Sharia and, and, and French law that was imported um, from France. Um, and I looked, per, actually before I, I want to tell you what I'm going to show you before I show it to you. Um, so my research was, uh, had many different components to it. One was interviewing court personnel, judges, lawyers, clerks, uh, observing court cases, interviewing disputants, interviewing people in the community. And what I was trying to get at in, in the part of my work that has to do with domestic violence, I was trying to get at how do people understand gender-based violence? How do they justify it? How do they argue against it? And where does Islam fit in there? Is Islam used to, to is the Quran, is, is, is faith in the Muslim religion used to rationalize or justify violence? Is it used to argue against violence? Um, and then how is that playing out in the courts? What are family court judges saying and, and, and what are they doing? Um, and the responses I got were, were quite mixed. Um, and so I'm going to show you three different excerpts from my data that I think uh, lay some of this out. The, the, the first is from an exchange I had with the court clerk. And think about what this says about the uh, acceptance of the Human Rights Project at the local level. I'm, I'm meeting this clerk for the first time. And he says, what are you, basically saying, what are you doing here? What are you, I'm a researcher, what are, you, what are you researching? And I said, divorce. I was interested in a lot of different issues, but I, I was particularly interested in domestic violence. He says, we know you are very concerned about domestic violence uh, in the West. And I said, that's true. And what about here? We don't have domestic violence here in Senegal. Now, as a good anthropologist, I'm, I'm there to learn, right? So I say, oh, is that so? He says, no, sometimes it happens that we have to hit our wives, but we don't have domestic violence. <laughs> this is quite interesting, isn't it? Um, you know, what, what, now, when I first wrote this down, I wasn't thinking about this in terms of human rights per se, but it's not very encouraging, is it? Because what it seems to be suggesting is there's no, we might be able to identify the same phenomenon, but we're not, we don't have a common label for it. We don't have a common way of looking at it. And we don't have a common way of defining it as a problem. Because he's basically saying, yeah, the violence happens, but it's not a problem. We hear you have that as a problem, but we don't, we don't define it as a problem. Well, how do you have a social justice agenda that includes um, uh, working against violence against women if this is sort of the, the, the cultural response? How do you... Uh, how do you penetrate that? How do you have a dialogue with that? How do you um, vernacular, vernacularize it, as, as Mary might say? Um, but there's some more hope, or at least grains of hope, in some of the other um, uh, excerpts uh, that, that, I, that I found in, in my interviews. Um, this is an interview with a woman named, named Rama. And, uh, and it's, it, it's, it's subtle, but I, but I want to uh, read this to you and then uh, tell you what I see here. Um, Rama says, the woman should, and this is a woman who had been battered. I, I knew that um, 
in the course of the interview. The woman should take care of the husband, of her children, and know that when the husband is living in a difficult situation financially, it is necessary to be patient. But also I think that despite all these conditions that a woman, the woman is ready to do everything for her husband, but she should not be battered. What she's doing here, if, if you're familiar with Senegalese society, she's reiterating a woman's obligations in the family. She's saying these are the traditional things a woman should do, uh, this is what I'm supposed to do, this is what I do. So she's really reifying, accepting some of the gendered norms of her, of her culture. And I say, and, and what is the role and the obligations of the husband? Rama, the husband should take care of his children financially. Now she's talking about the cultural norms surrounding what, what men and fathers and husbands should do. The husband should take care of, of his children, of his wife, and at no time must he court someone, meaning go after other women. It is necessary to respect his wife, to not beat her, and be always on the side of his wife and of his children. Okay, now, this is a woman who's very comfortable with sort of the local cultural and religious norms defining gender relations. And those include the wife being submissive and obedient to her husband. And she's, you know, she's saying, I know what my role is and I, and I know I have to play it. But to her, that doesn't include violence. And in fact, um, I interviewed a lot of women, uh, I interviewed, well, let, me, let me back up a little bit, I interviewed a lot of men and women, and what I found was tremendous variety in the way people um, understood what is Islam and Islamic law said about domestic violence. There were men who, who, un, who unequivocally used their faith to justify violence, and they would quote the, the Quran, and they would say, this is my... I'm allowed to do this, this is my duty, because it's tied in with this notion that the man is supposed to make sure his wife is behaving properly, and if he needs to use, and that means she should be submissive and obedient, and if she's not, it's legitimate for him to use violence. But I spoke to other men who said, um, you know, Islam is really a, a religion of peace, and some men hit their wives, but we're really not supposed to, and if, and if we do, it's really like a last recourse, and you're not supposed to hurt anybody, and you know, it's really better not to, not to do this. Um, and then I would talk to women who would, who, who would sound sort of like Rama and say, um, I'm not sure what the Quran says. I think the Quran says maybe it's okay, but again, Islam is a religion of peace. Pe people shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be doing this. Okay. So is there a potential in those sorts of responses for some connection uh, with, with human rights? Um, I, I don't know, but I, I think that there's some, there's some hope there for common ground. I found that when I talked to people about women's rights, they would often blanch. They would sound a lot like the clerk. You know, that's, that's, you know, that's fine for you guys there in the West. We don't believe in that. And to the extent to which the Senegalese government has tried to put human rights into, into law, into the family code, into the criminal code, a lot of people really resist that and say, that's not, that's not our law, that's not our faith, that's not how we are. On the other hand, there does seem to be some evidence for, for common ground. It's not necessarily a contest between local culture and the human rights agenda, that there, and that that common ground might be the, the means of some of the kind of cultural change that Mary uh, is talking about. And then uh, finally, I just want to read this excerpt from a, um, from the, a, a judge's decision. And again, it's a little subtle, I think, what I want to point out here, but let me read it to you. Um, so this is a judge who's decided to let this woman get divorced. And the reason she wants to divorce is because her husband brutalized her and let this other man brutalize her and her children. And the first judge who hears the case says, basically believes the husband that she's lying and says, no, you can't have the divorce. Go back to your husband and be obedient. Uh, but the second judge says this, there's no cause to investigate the security of the residents, meaning the, what's, whether or not there's violence in the household, where the children are living. Because even if the choice of the family residence belongs to the father of the family, that comes from Islamic law, it must be noted that the choice can be modified at the request of the mother in the event that she perceives physical or moral danger to those who must reside there. It is therefore necessary to open an investigation into the place of the residence chosen by Mamadou, the, the husband. What the judge is saying here is he's not referring to human rights, and he's not even referring to women's rights. And in fact, it would be perhaps nice because um, um, Fatu described some pretty horrific stuff that was going on. Uh, her and her, 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 her children were being uh, really brutalized. She, she had been raped by this man that the, 
her husband had, had, had told her to stay with. And it would be nice, perhaps, from, well, from my perspective anyway, if the judge had said, this violence is terrible, women shouldn't be treated that way. He doesn't say that. But he does use a local, cultural, and religious rationale to empower her to escape the violence and to empower the court to go in and now investigate the violence. He couches it in locally meaningful norms. Uh, again, perhaps a common bridge between the human rights agenda and what is uh, acceptable at the local level. Um, I think I'll stop there and uh, thank you for this opportunity and I'll welcome uh, questions. First, join me in thanking Dr. London for an extraordinary value. Means of looking at the world. Thank, thank you, thank you. Time for our question and answer period.